Welcome back to Mr. Latham's Economics. Okay, today we're going to talk more about GDP and the fact that GDP is an imperfect measure. Now, it's a lot easier to figure out the dollar values of all the final goods and services and measure that than it is to figure out, you know, it's like, well, what did we actually make? And do we make more stuff than we did the year before? Because things are continually changing you know did, did we make more buggies for horses this year or back in 1850 we made more back in 1850 but who cares because we don't use horse and buggies anymore so gdp gives us a financial measure but it's still not perfect why not okay well certain things are excluded from gdp and they should be excluded okay we don't want them in there the first one's financial transactions, okay? Let's say that uh, you own stock, and you own a half a million dollars worth of stock, and you sell it to somebody else for a half a million dollars. Well, did anybody get a job? Was there anything produced? And the answer is no. You've simply transferred value. You had half a million dollars worth of stock. Now you have half a million dollars worth of cash. The other person had half a million dollars worth of cash. Now they have half a million dollars worth of stock. You're both basically the same off as you were before. And nothing's happened in the economy other than maybe somebody earned a few dollars a commission. Okay. It, but the commission would be part of GDP, but, you know, $10 on half a million, it's not going to add up to much. Okay, second item, used goods. I buy a car. Is that part of GDP? Yes. Why? Because people had to produce that car. They, earned, they got jobs. There was production. The economy was helped by that. Two years later, I sell my car. Is that part of GDP? No. Why not? Well, because it was already measured. No one did any more work. You know, I bought my car for 20000 Now I'm selling it for 12000 Nobody did any work to make that car worth $12,000. That was already counted way back when. All we're doing, once again, is I'm trading an asset, a car, that's worth $12,000 for cash. I get the $12,000. The other person gets the car. Once again, no jobs were created. Third item is transfer payments. Most of the time we talk about transfer payments, we're talking about government transfer payments. And that think about, for instance, Social Security. Do you earn Social Security? Well, the answer is not when you receive your checks. You might work 50 years and say, well, I earned my Social Security. But the year you receive it, you didn't do any work. It's simply a payment from the government. They take money from someone else in the form of taxes, and they give it to you. It's not a productive transaction. Welfare, same way, right? You don't have to work for welfare. If you did, it would be part of GDP. But if you, assuming you don't, they just give you the money. Once again, it's a tax. They take money from one person. The government takes the money. They give it to somebody else. It doesn't really help our economy to do that because you're just taking one person's wealth and you're giving it to another. The last one's intermediate goods, and I mentioned that briefly in the previous video. You know, you take all kinds of parts to make a car, and there's sales over and over again trying to get that car, you know, from the time, you know, the, the iron ore is first made until we finally end up with a car. The, those goods aren't counted in GDP, and we'll go through a more detailed example in a second. Okay, now, in addition to not included because they shouldn't be, there's also things that are hard to measure. Okay, non-market activities. Okay, for my first, for about 20 years or so, while my kids were growing up, my wife stayed home and did not work outside the home. She didn't get paid. Now, did she actually do any productive work? Yes, she did a, she did a ton of work. Okay, I'm so grateful for all the work she did. How much of her work was in, included in GDP? The answer is zero. Why zero? Because it's really hard to measure. You know, was she worth 50000 or 30000 or 100000 Who knows? You just couldn't measure it. So we don't measure non-market goods. When, I'm, when I mow my own lawn, I don't, go, I don't call up the government and say, hey, I just mowed my lawn. Put in $20 for GDP. Okay, so non-market activities aren't covered. Underground economy. Okay, the underground economy. Let's say that somebody needs help with their taxes and I need some plumbing done. And so I, I say, you know what, I'll do your taxes if you do my plumbing. Well, that's underground economy. 
if if that person paid me, you know, 150 bucks to do their taxes and I recorded that, you know, and I, I that was my income and then I paid $150 and they did the plumbing, well that would be part of GDP. If we just trade it, nobody knows that we did it. That's an underground economy. That's the legal underground economy. In addition, drug dealers and all kinds of other criminal activity, well, does that affect the economy? Of course it does. People are spending real money on those things. But we can't measure it. People don't tell us what they're doing because if they did, they'd get arrested. Okay, Excluded from GDP. Ought to be in it, but it's excluded. Leisure time. Well, you tell me. Would you rather make 50000 a year or only 45000 a year? Well, that's an easy answer. Mr. Latham, I'd rather make 50000 What if I told you you had to work 70 hours a week to make 50000 or you could work 20 hours a week and make 45000 Whoa, Mr. Latham, you left out an important detail. That's correct. And so does GDP. GDP says 50000 is bigger than 45000 period, and it doesn't care how hard you had to work to get the fifty or 45000 and then one more thing, you know, that's that's pretty big is environmental damage. Okay, back in the day, you know, when I was a youngster, we used to pollute the stew out of the earth because it was expensive to clean up our pollution. And we're like, you know, hey, would you, you know, I can build this thing; and it's going to cost a hundred bucks, but I'm going to pollute the ground and the water and the air. Or I could I could do it where I didn't make any pollution, and the item would be cost three hundred dollars. And people are like, wow, I don't want to pay $300. Go ahead and pollute the heck out of everything. And so I did, and I sold it for $100, and everyone was happy for a while until they realized pollution is really bad. Okay? Well, the GDP says, congratulations, you sold a ton of these things for $100. And they don't say anything about, well, yeah, but you, you really destroyed the environment. We're going to have to fix that someday. And in fact, so, let's say someday is now, and we're going to have to spend a trillion dollars cleaning it up. Guess what happens to GDP? It goes up a trillion dollars. Now, did we by cleaning it up, did we really accomplish anything? Well, not, not so much, because we just got things back to the way they were in the first place. Okay, So not only does GDP not penalize you for creating environmental damage, but it rewards you when you clean it up which doesn't exactly make sense. By the way, China's having to deal with the, some of the things now that we dealt with like 40 years ago. So they're doing this. Okay, let's talk about intermediate goods. Okay, why do we exclude intermediate goods? Well, let's take that car. Okay, here we go, just real quickly. So initially, first thing we got to do if we want to make a car is we got a big old mountain here. Okay, there's a mountain range. It's snow covered. And what's down at the bottom of the mountain's iron ore. And so they dig up the iron ore. They take it to the steel mill. It's put into the steel mill. Steel mill rolls out certain things, okay, including sheet metal. So they roll out some sheet metal. They they take the sheet metal. They make, well, back in my day, they made antennas. Nowadays, cars don't really have those kind of antennas. But they roll out some kind of metal, Okay, and that metal gets made into something, a door, whatever. But let's say it's an antenna, and it goes to the antenna place. The antenna place then sends it to somebody that puts a little motor in it to make it work. You know, let's say it instead of an antenna, maybe it's a uh, one of those convertible tops that then it rolls itself down. How cool is that? So one person makes the convertible top. Somebody else motorizes it. Those people send that to Ford. What's Ford do? Ford actually puts it into the car. Okay, then Ford sells the car to the dealer. The dealer sells it to the consumer. Where do we record GDP? All the way down here at the very end at the consumer. That's where we record GDP. What are all of these things in here called? They're called intermediate goods. We don't include them or every car would be like 60 or 70 grand for a $20,000 car or like a couple hundred thousand dollars for a really nice Beamer or Mercedes or whatever. Okay, so that's why we don't include intermediate goods. Okay, so there's a couple of things, exclusions from GDP. Some make sense, other ones because we just can't measure them. Till next time, this is Mr.